Some say that the Oscar is dead. Well, it changes from giving its prestigious award to the best films into giving it to the most politically, if not the film that defines cinema that year. It's not wrong where we see that the viewership keeps on going down, but personally, it's an award that I still anticipate it every year. And this year, it is perhaps one of the best years of films where it is accessible to raise of audience from art house lovers to mainstream moviegoers. And no wonder the race is quite tight this year as the quality it divides is indeed top notch. On January 24, the nominations are announced and as usual, there are surprises and snubs. Today, we'll be looking at those categories one by one if they do deserve the nomination or not, what should be replaced if they decide to refold, and what will and should win the Oscar. This is a cinema lens. So welcome back to a cinema lens podcast. And I've never been this excited for the Oscar nomination since 2019 when Parasite got the award because this year is definitely a very competitive year for the Oscar as a lot of films produced are actually great and doesn't disappoint. But of course, their kind of nomination could come up as a disappointment and I just want to put my mind aloud of, on which film should be have been nominated or out of nomination. I will discuss this one by one in order of the nomination was announced and I will be excluding several categories. This include the best documentary feature, best documentary short subject, best live action short film, and best animated short film. The reason is simple because I haven't watched this film, especially the short one, which is very hard to actually search this film. So I have to exclude them from the list because I won't be able to give any opinions anyway. And without further ado, let's start. Actress in Supporting Role uh, Excluding Hong Chao's performance in The Whale, I saw all of this performance and honestly, I love it. All of them, they do deserve domination. Yet if I could extend, I would put Dolly De Leon's performance in Triangle of Sadness because the balance of her terror while still could be darkly comical makes her one of the standout, I believe. And who will win the Oscar this year? I I think it will be Angela Bassett. No, she surely, you know, that was a very strong performance because I do remember her scene to be the one that stand out of all the film. There have been some oppression to this because it's a Marvel film, but honestly, I could see Angela Bassett's charisma in there, and she is actually one of the driving nature of the film. Should win, I think it personally is for Bassett. No, I know many people want Condon to win, but I. I don't know, I can't really find Condor's performance to be that memorable. Maybe because he was outshined by the other performance on the film, the benches of initially. But I wouldn't actually mind if Condon or Bass had got the trophy. In, in fact, you know, I like all of the performance here, but Condon and Bassett is the one that should win the war, actually. And then we got costume design. And I watched four out of five films and haven't seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris yet, but I saw the images on Google. Uh, it's quite predictable because the Oscar will love Perry movie, I guess. And will win, I think it's either Alphys or Wakanda Forever. One, because it's a Perry film, a biographical movie that contains last design, and the other for its cultural diversity in Wakanda Forever. I'm not complaining there because Wakanda Forever do deserve its nomination, especially for the, you know, the telecom, the telecom clothing, you know, I think it's quite suitable for the South America culture, which I do appreciate it. And I think they do deserve the award, but if you ask me who should win this award, I think it's everything, everywhere, all at once. For a film that has a very multiple setting, the multiple universe, and to strike the balance of tone with this costume design, you know, it's just a lot of work. You know? And I also found that they should be give the award because it's just very creative in my opinion and to have a lot of that costume. I think it almost reached a hundred of her costume of it. Yeah, it's quite hard of it, you know, it's quite hard. And I think EAO should deserve the chance to win.
and then we got sound and watch all our films. You know, I believe the one that shouldn't be here is actually Elvis. You know, I found that wow, it captures the authenticity of Elvis' biographical life. Other than the focus, everything just feels too overabundant for me you know, to be on that focus on the sound, you know. And I really think this is the common criticism I have to Elvis because putting everything doesn't mean that it's effective. Uh, I think the one that should be here instead is EAO due to its immersive and diverse sound that captures what it feels like to be overstuffed with something without being too overstuffed. The EAO actually there's a lot of things that are going on, but to be able to produce a coherent sound for us to understand, for us to able to be on that moment, it's a very big job to do. It's every connect everything from scene to scene so smoothly. I uh, I never really found the sound actually got me out of the attention of the film. Who will win? I should win. I think it's Top Gun Maverick. You know, bro, to make that sound like that, to solve the airplane fight, dog fight scene, uh, they do deserve it, and yeah, uh, they really do deserve the sound to win the sound on Oscar. And then we got original score, uh, was all of the film, and as far as I start EAO, I feel like this is more of a surprise because I understand the nomination due to its experimental nature of the music, I guess that's why people pick it. Uh, I, I don't really find the soundtrack to be that memorable or award worthy, but you know, congrats to EAO, I'm, I'm not really disappointed at all. I know it has been shortlisted, but Michael Giantino's Batman should have been here. Uh, I don't know how it doesn't even enter the shortlist. I feel that its orchestral nature are iconic enough to deserve the award. No, that's, that's very iconic. I, I don't know why it doesn't get the award at all. Will when I should win on this, nom on this nomination, on this category? I think it's Babylon. Babylon you know, really deserves to win. And it should win, actually. Everybody has been talking about the soundtrack, actually. Justin Herbert did it again, you know, Fudu Mama, and the ending of the film, I felt like it's so grand, it's so great. I even had to put it on repeated several times in my playlist on my music. And I think why it deserved the award for me is because the universality of the team, you know, the score. The score tells me itself. Yeah, that that it's so universal. You will hear this across the film narrative. They're covering every emotion from being loud to the melancholy scene to be able to create a theme that is so universal. I think Justin Roberts do deserve the award for this. And then we got adapted screenplay. And there are three films that I've watched and I haven't watched Living and Woman Talking. And I can't really comment everything here because most people said that the whale snap and I will watch the whale. And hopefully before the Oscar rolls, I could watch both Woman Talking and Living. It's not really my type of film, but I saw that Living is based on Ikiru, the Japanese film. And so it will be interesting to see. And who will win people said it will be woman talking will win on this category and this is actually one of the least categories I could judge aside from the one that I excluded so I can't really talk much about this. But if I have to judge the three films that I watched, Glass Onion, uh, Top Gun Maverick, and also All Quiet on the Western Front. For me, I think it will be Glass Onion, Knife Art Mystery for me. Even though it doesn't include it in my top 10 list, but I see how Ryan Johnson incorporated a phenomenon of the pandemic that happened in the recent pandemic without making it cringe and it should really be applauded. That's even the reference of Among Us. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really find it cringe. I still find it like it's so funny. <laughs> uh, but to make a set cool with a complex and fun story is very hard, especially when you have a standard of the predecessor and quality to follow. And Gus only, I think, deserve the award. But anyway, I don't think I could judge this film. No, I could judge this category because there's a lot that I haven't really watched and it isn't the screen. No, it isn't like the most, the story that from the category, it isn't really what I, a fan of, of the screenplay. But 
this original screenplay. Original screenplay is the screen is a story where I found I am very attracted to because I watch everything in this category and I found that every one of the films here do deserve the award. So if I have to extend, I think after Sun, after Sun should be here, you know, because the subject of the screenplay being so hidden in plain inside and the theme of parenting, depression, coming of age, blast everything so perfectly and it's a film that really sticks. It's a film that really sticks after a while that you know that it's a great written screenplay. Aside from that, who do you think should win and who do you think will win and should win? For me, it's everything everywhere all at once. And although best of initial could be a surprise, but no, no, no. I think EAO does deserve the award it gets, you know. Perhaps what? No, it is one of the most creative films that I ever watched. It's a very imaginative screenplay that has everything in the film history, and I really do this. I really think that it do deserve the award. It, it will outrageous if it does not, all right? But anyway, it got nominated anyway, so. <laughs> And then we got actor in supporting role. And I haven't watched Brian Terry Henry Cosway from this list. But the other I've watched it. And it's honestly a tough one to pick the nomination here, in my opinion, because I really thought that Paul Deno from The Fabulous will get the nomination. The performance he gives actually a very complex, in my opinion. A great father with facial attraction of forgiveness, but you do know that inside there's just a disappointment. A disagreement, sexual emotion of overthinking things with his family and his son himself who wanted to pursue filmmaking. But you have to give credit to Jude Hurst as well for giving one of the most uplifting monologues of all time. He might play a small part in the short run time, but his presence always sticks to the audience across the film until the end. And maybe because I haven't seen Causeway, but perhaps if from the film I've watched, I would put Paul Dano or Brad Pitt from Babylon here. And unlike Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where I felt like he just played a safe character that stick with his persona, I think the performance of that Brad Pitt in Babylon is more mature, more fragile, and he do shows that I never really see him as Brad Pitt here. I see him as Jack Conrad, like a character in tragedy. Who do you think I should who do you think should win or will win this award? Uh, I have no debate about this. I think it will be he he won. He's like ninety seven percent of the supporting actor award. It would be outrageous for him not to get the award he deserves. No, it, it should be him. It's one of the best comeback in history. Twenty years to not have act in the film, and yet he delivers a very wide range of performance. Not just one, but three characters in one single film of the long time to have an acting at all. Just like. Very unbelievable, you know. I think he really carries the film alongside Michelle Yeoh. It is good, but who can remember him, you know, giving those emotional speeches about laundry and taxes? Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, God, no. Key Kwan really do this of the award. He sure they did need to get the trophy. Original song. And I haven't heard a pause from Tell It Back Woman. Uh, I don't even know what, what film is that, but it's a considerable surprise from This Is Alive from EAAO to get nominated. Now, I thought that Chao Papa would be more suitable big with here, honestly. Chao Papa is very an emotional song. But regardless of that, who do you think will win? I should win. It's Natu Natu. Natu Natu. No chance. No debate. No fox given. It's an absolute must win here, and I don't think I want to explain this film because, no, I don't want to explain this song, I don't want to explain the sequence because you need to just go check it out. Uh, you need to see it, you need to feel it. I, I can't describe it for you. But it's a very cinematic experience. Natu Natu is. It's a song that you need to hear, listen, and you need to see what's going on on the film in RRR. It's so great, it's one of the highlights of the film. You can see the reaction in... YouTube, where they just dance for that song, you know, it, 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 it's very great, it's very great, it's very great, all right, it's great, great so much of it. <laughs> and then we got International Feature Freedom. Now, this is the most disappointing section of the Oscar for me, because 
This is Shinto Deep, one of the best films I've watched this year. It doesn't get fucking nominated. Just so sad. Even if we know who's gonna win this category, if this is to Deep is in here, the one who should bring home the trophy is Park Chan Wook. I do watch three films here Close or Quiet of the Western Front and EO. The pick of EO, especially, I want it to be a pretty unique one, an interpretive of life from a donkey perspective. And who will win? We all know that All Quiet on the Western Front will win. The film itself got a Best Picture nominee, so it definitely has to be that. On the other side, I really think that All Quiet on the Western Front also should win on this top, on this category, based on the five category. But I really think I still stand the decision to leave to actually got no minutes that I got one just so one of the worst snob in Oscar history. In my opinion, they just not get get rid of decision to leave from the Oscar nomination. I know we got an animated feature film. I've watched three other films except Puss in Boots and The Sea Beast. And this year animation, and there really is a must to offer honestly. Like, they picked the best ones on the animation as, on the list as far as I know. And who will win? Everybody been talking about Guillermo Model Toro Pionicchio will be an obvious choice. But people are really raving about this Pinocchio adaptation, which is absolutely great. It's a very personal film. I've watched it. And Guillermo Del Toro really put a personal touch as well in this adaptation and it do deserve the award that the film really get picked. But honestly, who should get I think Master the Shell with Shields on? I just felt a very more intimate connection with this film where it served a very unique world, a deep philosophical messages as well as a heartwarming woman. While you may argue it's not really animated film, the Oscar accepted it into nomination and I think they deserve it. But again, if you talk about judging from the animation purely from the animation perspective, then nah it, it will be obviously be Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Yeah. No, not not the discipline Q, the girl and model for Pinocchio. I haven't watched the discipline Q. I heard that people say it's shit, but anyway. Yeah, girl model for Pinocchio, do deserve the award. And then we got makeup and hairstyling, and I haven't watched the whale yet. And it's really a tough combination here if we're going to shot it to fight because I really like Babylon and Crime of the Future practical makeup. And if the nomination got stretched, I think got stretched, those two should be in. Who will win? Should win? Nah, it's the whale. Well, the Batman has very good makeup, especially you, you won't recognize Colin Farrell as the penguin there, but the whale. If you just see it from a trailer, you know, to make Brandon Fraser like that from Jaws of the Jungle who get very buff, but yeah, a buff body. <laughs> and he do deserve the award, man. He just looks so fucking different and just believable to an extent as an obese man. And yeah, the whale should be getting the award. And then we got production design. I mean, I don't really have things to complain here. Everything on the films here do deserve the awards. I can't really talk of anything else aside from Wakanda Forever and EAAO. But it's a really close race and I'm happier for it. Who the team will win? I don't really know. It's quite unpredictable here, but Babylon, I think, should win here. It just captured the magic and dark side of Hollywood so well with the fiber set. I mean, kudos to them, really. Like, the massive set that Babylon gives is just captures the 1920 of Hollywood and I think Babylon should really win the award. And film editing. I've watched every film here and honestly the one that shouldn't be here is actually Alphys though. A lot of the cuts doesn't make the film good man. While I understand it tries to capture the vibrant kinetic energy but in the end I think just too repetitive and I really wish the chaos to stop and definitely does not deserve the nomination at all for me. Instead I think Babylon do deserve the nomination for this effective editing. Everything feels so coherent despite the grand massive or overabundance character and it's just easy to follow the storyline when you do the cross cutting, cross editing and even when the focus shift from another from one character to another character 
everything is feels so coherent and I think Babylon does deserve the editing nomination. Moving on, on the nomination type here, who will win? Well, people say that Top Gun Maverick will definitely win this award. I'm not surprised. You know, to cut the dogfight sequence with a lot of camera that even the director and editor could only review it in the editing room is perhaps one of the hardest process. But again, they still managed to make everything so tense, so realistic, so believable, so great, so effective in the editing to make us feel the jolt in our in our body. Top Gun should win, but if there's another film that I think do deserve the trophy, I think it's EAO. Because sport is seamlessly smooth cut and transition that connects everything, connect every universe, making the film so coherent despite hundreds of the film universe has things written in the film. And these two are the ones that deserve both awards. I am I would be disappointed if either Top Gun Maverick or EAO brought the award. But if it's Elvis, then yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be fucking disappointed at it. And again, how the hell Elvis is in here? Fair enough, I'm being biased because I hate Elvis. I really thought that the only thing that made the film work is Austin Butler performance. But come on, man, how to appreciate the camera work if they keep on cutting every three seconds? No, oh, no, no, man, no, no, no. How the hell is in there? And they didn't include Top Gun Maverick there. They picked on Elvis instead of Top Gun Maverick. Uh, it's just so odd because they didn't try to film this in the usual way. They have to use the custom break and camera to be able to give him that realistic effect. You no, know, stop in there, snap, snap, snap. It's really a snap. I also do wish that Babylon could also be included in the nomination. Not really a snap, but I do think that it deserves a recognition. And will win since Top Gun isn't here. Very disappointment indeed. I think all fight on the Western Front will win. I mean, all of the shots are effective indeed. Captain and the heroine of war was to manage to make it so beautiful. Like, the first shot of the film is just so beautiful that it reminds me of the reference and nature. But again, which we are cut to the very heroine nature in the war, the dark color palette of the gray color, grayish color palette of the war. But if you ask me who should win, I think it will be Tar. Tar is honestly one of the most surprising ones technically because you know the long take sequence is just so smooth to execute and never really, I thought it's a gimmick. But alongside all that, it never managed to be noticeable at all and it's still beautifully shot. The light, the movement, you know, it felt like a very perfectly captured frame in the film. And I do think that Tar deserves the award. But again, all Quiet on the Western Front is not disappointing as well. So I think All Quiet on the Western Front will also do this on the award. But again, if I have to pick, I think Tar should win. And then we got visual effects. And was everything on based on the shortlist? I think it's the best choice. I do like argue about Batman because I... Uh, yeah, I noticed like some of the visual effects still rough, but anyway, uh, as as a whole film, it, it, it's it's good, it's good. But I think if I want to add a film, it should be E A A O because perhaps the visual effects team isn't registered to the Oscar, but they should have been nominated here because the theme of doing five effects and it looks no, the team, the five people doing visual effects, five or nine, I forgot. It's a very small amount of number, a small amount of people to do the visual effects. And it looked better than most Marvel films, you know. It should be here. It's not even easy to make a visual effects with less people. And while there are some effects that doesn't feel really smooth, I think it does need to be acknowledged that of the creativity and fitting the context and tone of the film. And, you know, they're able to make it very, very high budget. Even though the amount of the budget is very, very low. <laughs> And Will Win I Should Win, I think is Avatar The Way of Water. I'm just speechless, you know. They really push the boundaries for the effect. You know, 13 years in the making and if it doesn't get nominated. No, no. If it doesn't get the award, I'm sorry. The Oscar just really give an L, you know. It just really give an L. <laughs> and then next, we got an actor in leading role. 
And I'm so proud that they give Paul Mescal a nomination here. It truly deserves the award. It's a very complex role indeed, and he executed so smoothly. And for the other nomination, I don't really complain because I believe they deserve it, although I haven't seen the way and leaving. Yet, if I could extend the list, I wanted Diego Calva to be there. Even with an A-list Hollywood actor, he still managed to win my heart. He played alongside Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. The charisma there is part of the, no, he's the most memorable character, actually, in the whole film, and that's actually a very hard task to execute. And will win and should win, I'm truly judging this from the trailer, but Brandon Fraser will win and definitely should win. He's playing a role that's so different than what I've seen in the past, The Mummy and Dawn of the Jungle. And it's a very commitment to put. And as well as the story he has now, a comeback story, coming back to Oliver after years being under the radar. And then we got actors in the leading role. Now this is perhaps... No, it's not perhaps. It is the most controversial section in the Oscar that's still ongoing until now. Andrea Riserbrook in Toe Leslie. Yeah, I haven't watched it, but everyone said that her performance is great. And if we're judging solely from the performance, they say that she do this of the nomination. But then, how could she even receive a like? Does even the voters like watch the film? Well, I don't really know. Right? The four runner Filer Davis and Daniel Dad Dewiler from Till and The Woman King got snubbed very, very hard. I <laughs> Even the Oscar even commented that they were going to change the the nomination rule. But they were still kept on the nomination, but then, then I don't know, they got more snap hard for Hilary Davis and Daniel Jet Boiler. But aside from that, I've seen a four of the performance here. Under the Armas is indeed a surprise, but I think she do deserve the nomination. The reason why I keep on watching Blonde, I think it's because of her charm. I really rate Blonde as one of the worst films of 2022, but Under Armas is not the worst, no, it's the best aspect of the film, and she really carries the film until that I'm watching it until the end of the film. And if I would pick the exchange Andre Riserbro, I think it would be Tom Wei, uh, because until this day, I really have no idea what the character is thinking. You know, such a very mystery, such a sly figure that you find her to be attractive no matter what. Tang Wei really do drive decision to leave. It do deserve the nomination, Leaf. Yeah, <laughs> she should be here. No, I think the film should be here as well, you know. And who do you think will win? I think who will win is Kate Blanchett. No, the performance he gave is incredibly powerful. I rarely see a film where I see a character being near perfectly written as in that while the victim is or so. And she really gave the detail of Thai biography from her performance and show who is Tar. I even at one point I really thought that Tar is a real human being, you know, and she deserved the award. But then if I think will be a very, very great to win the award. It will be Michelle Yeoh to take the award home. You know, to play multiple characters in a single film is not an easy job. And you can finally see the range of her role instead of being cast in another martial art film. She did this in Member Geisha, you know, but perhaps because I really love EAO, I really think that Michelle Yeoh should take the award home. But between those two, I really don't mind. Coming to the last two category, we got directing. And Ruben Oslan is a surprise in it. Although I could see that his directing are so effective, especially in the boat scene where the camera keeps on moving like we're in the ship. It's really an unexpected and a choice that create immersion to the audience. So if he deserves the nomination, he do deserve the nomination. And this year though that the directing is a hard section, especially if I'm going to nominate the film, I will pick blockbuster films like Oscar doesn't really regard most blockbuster films, but nevertheless, these films are different because of the education, you know, like James Cameron pushing capture performance technology in a creation of 13 years, and the result was just marvelous. And a Top Gun Maverick, Joseph Korsinski, giving all of his trust to the cast and crew involved in the production. Shooting without being able to see the footage live is definitely a very, very stressful job indeed. And then we got Access Raja Moli as well, creating one of the biggest and most beloved film of the year, spending almost five years in the making and with that skill. I think that it would deserve the nomination and recognition. But you know, I can't complain really much because all of the directors here do deserve the nomination that 
the nomination this. And will win. I think Steven Spielberg will win, you know, because Oscars really love him, especially the subject is about his autobiography and the cinema itself. But who do you think should win? I think who should win is the Daniels, the creative freedom they put, you know, shooting within 30 and 40 days and to come up with that result was huge, you know, with a very small amount of budget, yet they managed to make it so rich, so high budget. And they managed to make a film in a single location into an epic swirl of infinite multiverse. You know, the creativity they input into the film does do deserve a win. And I, last time I watched an interview about how Daniel directed the film, like, they quote that they tried to make this like a summer camp, which I never really heard about it before because directing itself is a very stressful job. And then I ever been in that position? We are racing against time, but the Daniels, they managed to make it like, a summer camp, a very fun time, you know, and it's a very new perspective to see at, and I really think that they do deserve it. And then we got the best picture, the last, the most prestigious award in the Oscar. And the only film I haven't watched is The Woman Talking, and if I have to remove from this nomination this it will be Elvis you know you know why I said it before I said I really hate Elvis and I'm going to put Babylon to the list or maybe RRR I don't know why I do just do like the film so well I like RRR so much and Triangle of Sanders is indeed a surprise like I have a feeling that it'll get nominated but not on the best picture side that nevertheless the race this year is all quite predictable for the nomination and who will win, I guess, it will be the Fablemans. I guess if a film about cinema and really related to the Oscar audience, a classic pick if we're looking at the history of Oscar. They really like period film, they really like an autobiography, they really like cinema. I mean, it all, it all meet the category. But then, who do you think I do you think should win? I think personally for me, it's everything I will all at once. Again, the best villain of the year and one of the best villain of this decade. It was century perhaps. And I know it will be a bizarre history for a film containing Bud Pluck and two last of rock to bring back home the trophy. But you know, it's a pure cinematic experience from the beginning until the end, you know, and if Oscar is about to give the best film of the year, I think EAO do deserve it, just like Parasite did. Anyway, that's my thought of Oscar this year. And I really can't wait for the award in it to see who will bring back the pot trophies. And I think I'm going to make another podcast episode uh, of my, not my initial reaction of the, of the Oscar, who, who bringing back home the trophies. Uh, but what do you think of the Oscar this year? Like, do you agree with my thoughts or do you agree with the nomination? And if you have to put another film or another actor or another ones that work on the industry, who do you think that should be on the list? And let's just maybe discuss it in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next podcast. So subscribe to this podcast as well to follow to my journey. And that's it. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.